I mean, look at this guy. I love him. This material is classified as a satire to expose stupidity and corruption in contemporary politics under Title 17, Section 107 of United States Copyright Law. So this guy was jogging around this park in preparation to train for ISIS and had this guy train him on how to use a Kalashnikov, which is coincidentally the same weapon that he used 10 years later to do this whole PSYOP in Paris. Anyways. His brother, said Kawachi, met with Anwar Alalaki back in 2011 while he was staying in Yemen. And Anwar Alalaki, who was the first American on the CIA's killer capture list, was actually a lunch guest at the Pentagon months after the September 11th attack, even though he was the head of Al-Qaeda. So a lot of people believe that he's a CIA informant. And also, coincidentally, while he was there, said was roommates with the underwear bomber, who was another CIA informant. So I think it's a safe bet to say that the Kwachi brothers are probably CIA operatives. Or maybe they're a part of a French intelligence organization or agency. Then later in that day, you had an unarmed female officer that was shot and killed, supposedly, by another suspect, Koulibaly, and his fiance Hayat Boumedien. And the mainstream is now coming out and saying that Boumedien had over 500 phone calls with the Kawachi brothers here in the recent past. But what they're not telling you is that Hayat Boumadien's father, Lakdar Boumadien, spent seven and a half years in Guantanamo Bay because they said that he tried to blow up U.S. and British embassies. But he claimed innocence the entire time and he actually challenged his detention in Guantanamo Bay and he won. He was released in 2009, the White House struck a deal with France. Obama struck a deal with Sarkozy. Remember Sarkozy from the beginning? The former president about taking this Guantanamo detainee to France. Sarkozy ended up taking him in and neither the French nor the United States government thought that he should be imprisoned again. So they let him free and he actually receives money in an account from somebody. He doesn't even know who gives him the money. He just receives it every month. Coincidentally, in 2009, the same year that he was released from Guantanamo Bay, Koulibaly meets with Sarkozy at the palace. And remember, Koulibaly is the fiancé of Hayat Boumadien. And Koulibaly's quoted here saying, Sarkozy's not truly popular with the youth in the estates, but that is nothing personal. In fact, it is the case for most politicians. The encounter really impressed me. Whether I like him or not, he's the president after all. All four suspects ended up getting away, supposedly, and the next day, instead of leaving the country, the Kawachi brothers went to a print shop for some reason, where the police encountered them and ended up killing them. Whereas Koulibaly and his fiance went and held up a a Jewish kosher supermarket where some strange things happen here too because there's a metal roll-up door that usually is only able to open up from the inside but we'll just give them the benefit of the doubt and say that we can open up this one from the outside but when they open up these doors only one guy rushes in right and all of a sudden just gunfire everywhere there's hostages in this supermarket keep in mind well, all of a sudden there's an explosion in front of them, and this man starts running out. It could be anybody, but they say that they see a gun, and it's this Koulibaly, and they ended up killing him. The door is raised, and the sound of gunfire crackles through the air. The first of the police officers break in. A body is clearly visible, motionless on the floor. Fire is returned, a shower of bullets from within the shop forcing police to cower. An explosion and a man runs towards the door firing a weapon. It was the gunman, Amadi Koulibaly, who was killed. The son of a chief rabbi, a pensioner, a worker and a teacher were the supposed victims of this kosher supermarket hostage situation, PSYOP. 
and of course they were all Jewish. And we have the mainstream saying that Kulabali's fiance escaped somehow with all the hostages and was able to flee to Syria. And let's not forget that Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, warned France that it'll be a grave mistake that they recognize Palestine as a state. Or the fact that the French and the Yemen ambassadors met on Tuesday, the day before the Charlie Hebdo shooting, or hoax, PSYOP, and their top priority that they were talking about was security. And these supposed ISIS terrorists were from Yemen, Al-Qaeda. But things really get weird when the police chief that was investigating the Charlie Hebdo situation committed suicide in his office. I don't think that man committed suicide at all. I think he found something out he wasn't supposed to find out. This whole situation just fits way too neatly in the agenda that Albert Pike lays out when he's talking about the three world wars and initiating a third world war in order to bring about the new world order. The third world war must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences caused by the agentor of the Illuminati between the political Zionists and the leaders of the Islamic world. The war must be conducted in such a way that Islam the Muslim Arabic world and the political Zionism, the state of Israel, mutually destroy each other. Meanwhile, the other nations, once more divided on this issue, will be constrained to fight to the point of complete physical, moral, spiritual, and economical exhaustion. We shall unleash the nihilist and the atheist, and we shall provoke a formidable social cataclysm which in all its horror will show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism, origin of savagery, and of the most bloody turmoil. Then everywhere the citizens obliged to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization and the multitude disillusioned with Christianity whose deistic spirits will be from that moment without compass or direction, anxious for an ideal but without knowing where to render its adoration, will receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer, brought finally out in the public view. This manifestation will result from the general reactionary movement which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism, both conquered and exterminated at the same time. And a lot of people dispute this letter from Albert Pike because they say there's no, there's no proof backing it up, that a lot of terminology in the letter is, is after the time of Pike, which is understandable. But the Third World War scenario that I just described is also written in a book by Leo Taxel in 1894 and in the book he claims it to be a letter written by Pike to Mazzini in 1871 which that quote was later considered to describe the Bolshevik Revolution and whether a hoax or not it predates 1917 that book is what's listed in the British Museum and that's what Rodriguez was talking about when he said that the letter is in the British Museum because the book contains the full letter so, be it a hoax or not, it's really scary that, that this stuff is coming true. The only way a socialist, communist, new world order is going to happen is if we let it. We have to wake up.